Deathly uh, should be a marksman player. Golden Guardians here, looking uh, at Deathly on his screen now, because he's a very strong carry in the bot lane there. He played the Kai'Sa in the mid lane. He's very much a youngin, but he's filling the role quite quite well. Yeah. This does point to some of the systemic issues for Golden Guardians. Three game losing streak, they went from two and one to two and four. Where they put the eggs in the Deathly basket, but those eggs are cracked. Deathly for you, this is your first 2-0 weekend ever, so how excited are you? It's definitely a little bittersweet. It came after an entire split, almost. I didn't think I'd get the opportunity to come to Riot, get like a studio tour, and just play here. Like, it's incredible, and I love it. So before joining the LCS, I played two splits in Challenger, where we got first place in the regular season and proceeded to um, get second in playoffs. Both seasons I played in the promotion tournament, we failed to qualify. And for some reason, there's a poppy on the rift here for EU United in this best of five relegation match. They wind up losing this one. They're going back to the Challenger series for the duration of summer. But Envy's already cut off his escape method. Gilius has gone down over there. Poppy now is going to get collapsed on and yeah, just going to wind up going down. And EU United seems to be just falling apart at the scene. Hey guys, it's Topoli Me with Yahoo Esports, and I am joined by EU United's definitely fresh off of that elimination tournament. I. It's a bummer, I gotta ask you. Just what, what what happened in those last few games? Um, I think Envy as a team just was better than us, so we'll come back next time and be a lot better. So, I mean, let's talk about your story for a second because you have an interesting background. You came from the first scouting grounds that Riot ever threw together, moved into the challenger scene, and then you made it all the way to the promotion tournament. So, I mean, that's not too shabby. I saw you posting on Twitter that you were playing against your idol, Double Lift. I was just a fan, like, a year ago, I just watched LCS. I thought it was really cool, and I've always like thought of him as my idol. <laughs> He's really good, <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure maybe next split I'll be just as good as him. So coming into spring of this year, I was a bit unsure of how I stood among all the rest of the NA LCS AD carries. I think most of my uncertainty came from just my personality. Really, I'm very down to earth and very realistic with myself, and like, I felt like I wasn't a top tier AD carry at the time. So what do you think of this lineup of guys? You know, what do you think of sort of your situation and joining up with these guys, being on an org that's got Golden State Warriors behind it, the whole deal. You've got High on this team who's been to Worlds, been to All-Stars, just kind of lauded as this uh, shot caller. I think it's really interesting for me at least because like I'm a rookie coming into this and I'm getting to play with like four veteran players. So there's a lot for me to learn. So when emotions come to mind during my first split, the, f the first couple would be excited, would be scared, would be anxious, very anxious actually. My first couple matches on stage, I'd say my first three or four, like the first two weeks of LCS, I, my mind was like numb and my fingers, I felt like I wasn't playing like I usually played and that affected my performance. There's still questions around who's going to be the carry of the team of Golden Guardians. We know High's the brains, but who's going to be the bronze? Who's going to be the person that he's going to command to body the enemy? Looking uh, at definitely on your screen, somebody that feels like he could learn a lot from Matt, become a very strong carry in the bot lane there, especially with the guidance of High, that guy in the mid lane. Since we started off the split, or the spring split 0-7, there wasn't really much. Actually, I. I I felt really pressured to win because I didn't want to be the team that ends like 0-16. I always have that pressure on my back because in the spring split I was like a genuine rookie and I wanted to show everybody that I could compete, that I could play well and my team was good. Towards the later end of last split I started having like a lot of really really strong performances through wins or losses. I remember like there was one game against Echo Fox that um, went really well for us. Well it's Phoenix's this year, it's completely different and baby! Oh! So is that game against Echo Fox was one of the first times that I kind of completely took over the game. Um, me and Matt got like three or four solo kills and just like in lane, and I just felt like I was coming into my own. Golden Guardians right now sitting at the bottom of the standings, dead last, are taking on Echo Fox, the number one team. You gotta play to your own style. You gotta make them play to that style as well. Even initiating onto Adrian when he has his ultimate. Oh, that. He didn't even use it. Cow down. Almost being down. Phoenix is now in the middle of the fight, yeah. trying to fight under the sun. That's it. That's it. Nobody I think I really struggled to play against like stars. Me coming out of my comfort zone a bit came from just a gradual progression in ways where like 
Last split, Adrian and Altec were considered like really like a really strong lane and a really good bottom duo, and we were able to like completely smash them, and that just gave me that little extra confidence that allowed me to take a step further. And with every like with every small victory we get, even if we don't win the game, like if I'm doing well, it still boosts my confidence a bit going into like the next week, and I think that's how today I'm able to like play against anybody. To be honest, it felt very sad and depressing um, going four wins and 14 losses. Going into the mid-season or off-season in between splits, I felt like we as a team really needed to push each other and improve as a team. I felt like that was like the biggest change we needed to make going into the summer split. So Golden Guardian having that Kaisa, putting all their eggs in the Deathly basket. Of the summer split, they'll say, yeah, we'll take it. And we'll take it all the way to the bank, baby. The Nexus turrets down, the ace on the Team Liquid, and Golden Guardians making an impact game, a statement game. 21 minutes in, we'll finish on the Nexus as they'll start the second day of the summer split with a victory over Team Liquid. It's roll swap here. It'll be definitely playing Kaisa in the mid lane slash jungle. Yeah. He played incredibly well last split, and I remember their times being like, definitely is the person they need to have step up as a carry. I don't think you can step up harder than being funneled two lanes of farm. Good job, Matthew. Good job. You're fucking nuts. <laughs> what a start for Golden Guardians as they take the lead. Golden Guardians And there is the, the Heimerdinger for Deathly. He was hand taught by Heisendong himself. We're trying to teach him the ways of the Dong because apparently he's meta now. If you asked me a year ago, or if you told me a year ago from today that my pocket pick or whatever, or what I'd be known for in the LCS is Heimerdinger, I'd just kind of laugh at you and be like, why the fuck would I ever play that champ? I'm um, have to run away, flash play. We're gonna get a down ignite, it's good. Oh, but there's the missiles, definitely. Able to get the kill in the 2v3. The oh, Guardian's under the turret, there's the first bubble gonna land. Goodbye, Cody. Goodbye, Afro. And Matt, Coco Corn in the back line. And it looks like 100 Thieves' time has finally run out. Golden Guardians will upset the first place team and 2 0 for the first time in their history. For you, this is your first 2-0 weekend ever. So how excited are you? Uh, it feels really good to finally like have like a pretty clean weekend and win with my team. That pulls CLG into a sense of security, and the missiles are launched by Deathly. Target down as Biofrost falls. He have the presence that Golden Guardian wants. He goes down the kill for Matt. The Nexus in favor of Golden Guardians as they take down Connor Logic Gaming. And the Golden Guardians end the first half at five and four. Already a better record than last split. More wins on the board. And it's like any sport going into halftime, going into the half. You hit a good score, you hit a final point. They're on a three game win streak as they start that second half. And that's got to feel really good. I expected the split to be a lot better than last split. And I think the first couple of weeks definitely showed that we could contend to be like a good team in the LCS. However, we didn't continuously improve and it felt like coming into the split, we were definitely at a higher level than we were last split, but we kind of stagnated there or even regressed. Well, I definitely felt like the Team Liquid Optic week we had, we definitely could have gone 1-1 and even 2-0 if we were playing really well. But Optic threw like a curveball at us with the York top pick, I think. It really caught us off guard and they won with it. And against Team Liquid, we threw like, oh, that week was just so sad. We threw two games where they're completely in our control, like the game should just be over. But due to our like poor team chemistry and poor macro play, we weren't able to close out those games. So that was just like a big warning sign to me that like these are things that we really need to improve on going into the like future weeks. For me, during those losses, I just resorted back to solo queuing because that I felt like that was the only way I could really improve. But at the same time, it felt like I was kind of banging my head against the wall, just playing solo queue all day. I definitely don't think it's healthy, but at the same time, I felt like it was the only thing I could do. For me, being in the LCS has been losing. I personally am a really competitive person and ever since I was born. Like I played a lot of sports growing up as a kid and I hated losing. I hated losing, I hated losing, and I never wanted to 
Not only did I not want to lose, but I never wanted to be the reason that my team lost. So every time we lost and it was because of me, I really took those to heart and I really like, it, it really like pissed me off and I'd work like extra, extra, extra hard to make sure that that doesn't happen again and uh, I'm playing the best I can to make sure my team can like, reach the finish line. I'd hope to say that the thing that I improved on the most this split was my play. I feel like if you look at a timeline from beginning of spring split to week nine of summer split, you can see vast changes in my play and consistency now than before. Personally, I don't really care about statistics and whatnot outside of wins and losses. I don't really care too much about like DPM. I don't care too much about like how much CS I have. I don't care about all these like minute stats. What really matters is if my team won or not. And I just want to help my team the, like, the most I can. I hope by the time I retire, I'll be considered one of the best AD carries in North America and one of the best NA talents produced here. I want to show that like I'm not just a KDA player and that I can carry my team through like the finish line and like prove everybody wrong. Where's Deathly? Where's Deathly? Where's Deathly? Where's Deathly? Man, where's Deathly?